Good morning, guys. How are you? Welcome to another show of Root Shoots and Coffee. I'm Kirsten. And I'm Haley. And we're here to talk to you guys about houseplants and outdoor gardening. Um, we will answer any questions you guys have too, whether it's relevant to the subject morning, or not. Guys. How are you? Oh. Um, so put them in all caps in the chat. It helps us a lot to find your questions. And we'll try to answer those as we go. I'm going to fix my settings a little uh. bit, guys. You know us. Ah. We're... No, back up. Back up. <laughs> It's making me stretch oh. it. Oh. How are you guys doing? How's your gardens? <clears throat> what do you guys got growing? Harvesting some stuff now, I assume? Okay, now's at a weird angle. <laughs> Look at it. Oh, no, it's just because I was close. I think it'll come back. Give it a second. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what are, you, are you guys harvesting anything right now? Mm -hmm. I know our... Balcony um, garden upstairs, we've been harvesting a couple things lately. So, yeah, peppers, it's all kind of coming together at once. So, yeah, um, we've been taking in tomatoes, yeah, peppers, green beans. The cucumbers aren't doing great up there. It's on a black rooftop, so yeah. it is a bit warm toasty. up there. It's yeah, toasty. Our basil might have got fried. The basil might have been my responsibility. But you guys know that I'm the indoor... Person, She's doing so. great though. She kept half of them alive. We decided yeah. we were gonna grow all of the basils, and uh, yeah, I don't know, do some photo, photo yeah. shoots of things. Uh, the weekend we're not really here, so they yeah. got fried along the way. Yeah. Some recovered, but yeah, yeah, we're harvesting some beans too. I see. Uh, Christina says half her cucumber yeah. patch is dying. Yeah, the heat has been really bad, but depending on where you are, you probably have time to start them again. We just yeah what we sowed a week and a half ago and our plants are on their way up so you can definitely you could probably start again yeah um that's something interesting too i was thinking about this i feel like a lot of customers i've spoken to on the phone or in store have been kind of surprised at the idea of a fall harvest and replanting right now so if you guys want to hear about that too in another video let us know because yeah i do feel like there is some some people missing out on that second harvest. Right, yeah, we get so bummed over the loss of our first set of plants that we just call it quits, where we can really start all over. And actually, the benefit of it is you don't deal, obviously, with the same weather problems, but you also don't yeah. deal with the same pest problems. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, squash and the squash mine board. Yeah. Darth Maul. <laughs> it's the Maul. bane of all of our <laughs> existence. And uh, he doesn't show himself as frequently in the fall <clears throat> we like that um yeah. plus you just don't deal with the bolting as much which is nice right. like your lettuce and all the stuff i mean think the weather is warm mm -hmm. enough for your plants to get started and then by the time it starts to cool off it's better to steward your plants yeah. through to harvest yeah so in a way depending on what kind of garden you are it might be a little easier for certain things for you so give it a shot uh, but we will talk about that maybe in another video too um Oh, this, yep. As soon as you said it, Katie Williamson says the squash bugs are killing me. They are. Uh, they're terrible. And and so they've gotten some of my plants. And it's, of course, the plants that I didn't take the time to do the... I did the aluminum foil around oh, the yeah. base on mine. And uh, I got a row and a half done. And then Jake started some other ones like in the next plot. And I was like, yeah, I got other things to do. And those are the ones that are struggling. So, so. <laughs> that is so interesting to me, though. I, I know, like, with experiments, it takes some time sacrificing part of your garden. Right. Or in this case, it was easier because a little less work. Yeah. But it's so nice to have that variable where <clears throat> one has got to change variable, the other one doesn't. Right. Compare. And you can, yeah, you can, exactly. And that doesn't mean I don't have squash bugs. I still have them, and I'm battling them just fine. They don't, they're not a huge nuisance to me. Yeah. If I stay on top of it, so... I'm always taking eggs off leaves and squishing any I find. And the more you're on top of it, the better it's going to be, of course. True. Not everyone has that time to go out in the garden. I yeah. understand that. Believe me, my time is wildly limited. Um, we try to keep but, it busy. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, what else can I sow right now in Michigan for fall harvest? You So we've talked about how to figure out... The answer to this question based on our the days remaining in our season mm -hmm. you know because 
I could sit here and flip over every packet and tell you what's available to go, or I could teach you how to figure it out yourself. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, here in Google, your first estimated frost date, and you're just gonna find how many days are in between that. And then from there, you're gonna, you're gonna decide if you have any type of season extension Mm -hmm. materials so like frost covers or stuff like that if you grow in a hoop house any you know I want a hoop house <laughs> Ooh, that kind of made me think I found you can get greenhouses like <clears throat> you know little stand-up greenhouses for like eight dollars on Amazon just gonna throw it out there actually I think it was on all these have this weekend I'll wait like what? that you can walk it's into like, yeah like a little house mm -hmm. one yes yeah, it's so not bad. I did Show it to my husband. I said, what do you think of this? And Austin's like, actually, I showed him a picture when the plant groups, someone posted it in their house. And he was like, that's kind of cool. It is cool. It's a lot of space. But it anyways, is. they're pretty affordable. Yeah. <clears throat> if anyone is trying to find a way. Otherwise, we have talked about doing stuff like cutting the hula hoops, putting the tarp yeah. over, and making humidity. And now's the time to start thinking about mm -hmm. that for season extensions. Try not to wait until the cold is here and we're trying yeah. to save things. Um, but yeah, so you're going to consider if you have any type of season extension equipment mm -hmm. on you and then from there you can add on maybe a week or two if you do. Uh, for instance, I think, what is it, our la or first estimated frost date is typically mid-October. Typically, I haven't Googled it in a while. Um, it's on my list to do so I can figure out what I can keep going with. Um, and we are in, are we end of? July? Yeah. End of July. Tastes so like if I, awesome. yeah, so <laughs> if I were to count, it's easier for me to count from the middle of July. So middle of July to middle of um, August, September, October, that would be three-ish months, around 90 days. So I'm guessing I had 77-ish days. Yeah. That was okay. a very particular number. <laughs> Just felt good. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be looking at the back of my packets and seeing what varieties mature within 65 to 70 days. Because you have to include germination time in there as well. Um, so I'm looking for like a yeah, 65 to 70 day maturity mm -hmm. rate that I can get going. So beans, um, you can do. And then you can also consider what is cold hardy. So like your brassicas, all of those can go up. You can, I'm still putting herbs in the ground perennial herbs so that way I have them for next season. Um, they just have to get mature enough to have a root system. Mm -hmm. um, carrots I just put in the ground. Uh, no peppers, no tomatoes, mm -hmm. your greens, stuff like that. So practice with that. Look at the backs, figure out your time frame, and go from there. But there's a lot of good info on that, and I want to say some of it because I think this will yes, be a good we will. Thing too oh, we can do all yeah, a whole thing on that. Next but week. um, I I'm, I apologize for the uh, typo in our title, <laughs> but I think it's cute. Uh, well, maybe fix I'll fix later. it after. That was um, my bad. I'm, but <laughs> we're doing too many things at once this morning. Yes, as always. Morning. And you know, it wouldn't be a root shoots and coffee if there wasn't a technical glitch. Let's not make that a thing. But yeah, yes. I just sprayed you. Sorry. I'm true. You did spray me. But, okay. <laughs> um, but today, I, we did kind of want to talk about trellising because we're talking about what are people going through in their gardens right now. We've covered pests. We've talked about propagating as your plants get bigger, that kind of thing. Uh, pruning, we talked about last week. So kind of covering all the things we're doing in our gardens, our houseplants right now. But yeah. we kind of were talking about trellising as well because maybe you don't want to just cut up your plants and propagate and make new ones when they get bigger. Um, so trellising is also a really good option. Um, I feel like a lot of people get a little confused, at least in the houseplant world, of like, what can I use for a moss hole? How do I attach plants to it? That kind of thing to get it to grow up. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I will say another perk, though, too, to trellising and getting it to grow up is that the leaves get more mature sometimes, so they get bigger. Yeah. So you'll find sometimes with your trailing plants, you're like, why are my leaves getting smaller? Sometimes it is a light issue because they're not all getting the light same. in the right way. Sure. Yeah. But a lot of times, too, it's just they want to grow up. It sounds funny. Yeah. but No, it's true because my that pothos I have, I sent you the picture. Yeah. Where it's on top of, I have like a, a fireplace, an electric portable fireplace that like sits on my um, buffet. And so my pothos is hanging down. It's got to be at least six feet long. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> the leaves right by the... The window are actually nice and large, and yeah. the ones at the, the bottom are smaller, like half the size. Bees. 
Nipples. <laughs> um, and yeah, so naturally papillas just want to grow upwards. So something you can do, like the absolute easiest thing people talk about are, are, are moss poles. But let's say you don't have access to that or you don't want to make it, which is a couple ways to make it, but typically um, I've seen a lot of people do PC. Oh, I'm gonna mess up again. PVC, PVC, pipe. Yeah, it, yeah. No. <laughs> PVC pipe, and they'll put moss around it, and they wrap it around with twine or something to hold it. And you can do that. Um, that's probably your best way. I know, like a couple of our nurseries around here do have moss poles for sale. That's what I like because it's a little easier and there's yeah. multiple sizes. But um, also they, easy DIY shoes. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, so it's nice um, because it'll attach into there. So. The plant where we talk about propagating, you cut it where the node is, and that node will grow roots in the water. You can attach that into the moss pool and kind of spray it and keep it wet. It'll grow new roots into that, and it'll start to climb. That's so cool. Yeah. I think it's cool. It is a little something different. Yeah, she asked what I'm doing in the garden lately, mm -hmm. and I'm literally spending all of my time pruning and trellising. Trellising yeah. is like my biggest one. And... Uh, we uh, we kind of scrapped together what we had available, and so some of my trellises uh, could have been an extra two feet taller, and they're not. Uh -huh. And so some of my tomatoes are reaching the top of my trellis already. So I gotta figure that little situation out, or I just let them go wild from there, yeah. which I've done before, and it works fine. It's just not as neat and tidy as I'm trying to keep things. Um, but what kind of tools are you guys using to trellis? to what you know like i use a lot of fencing or cattle panels or i use twine a lot are you guys trying different trellising methods say with either like your cucumbers or tomatoes any of your vining plants hmm. your tomatoes are so sugary <laughs> that doesn't sound like a terrible thing um, i kind of like the sweeter ones i'll give a little shout out to wicked awesome gardening says that she also has some videos and trellising. Nice. And so that could be a good resource too. Cool. Um, she says her spaghetti squash are growing crazy over her trellis. It's the same thing as your tomatoes. Yeah. It's kind of a funny thing. I feel like too with houseplants, the idea of it growing over top of its trellis or moss pole stresses me out. <clears throat> so what do I do now? But you can normally rework it around again. Or I've seen people do the painstaking pulling it off and attaching something bigger. Yeah. But a lot of times there's I, another option. And there's, you often damage more so doing that. Yeah. At least outside. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed yeah. that. If you pull it off, sometimes it'll just die because it's mad at you. <laughs> Don't like that. Don't like that. Um, I have seen some where people <coughs> have their plant wrapped around a moss pole and it gets too tall. And besides just trailing down, they start putting those little command strip hooks onto the, um, onto the, like, their wall. <laughs> Sorry, I could not think of the word wall. <laughs> And yeah. they start putting the vine through there. And so it's kind of cool because they'll start growing up your wall. Right. But be careful because those aerial roots. They can tap into your wall. They start to embed into <laughs> your wall. And yes, you can repair it after and all that stuff. But. Oh, layers. Yes. Bit nice. of a pain. Mm -hmm. um, Dixie fire too close for safety in your garden. I'm so sorry. I know a lot of people are dealing with the wildfires right now. And, you know, I pray that everything just, everything is okay. Mm -hmm. um, and that yeah. the only damage is things that can be rebuilt. For sure. Yeah. It's kind of a scary time. It's definitely a scary time. Um, I have cucumelons <clears throat> growing up my gated arbor <clears throat> into my garden. I bet that's beautiful, by yes. the way, Jenny. That sounds so uh, nice. <laughs> they've reached the top in one spot and started trellising over. It makes it real easy to find the fruit. Yeah, that's a cool thing about arbors is that your plants will trellis up them and it'll put its fruit like under the arbor. And that way you're not like digging through leaves. It's just because it's heavier than the leaves. So it just falls through the holes of Ooh. whatever you're using mm -hmm. to trellis. And it makes it really easy for picking. That's why a lot of people do it with beans. And then yep. they have this like majestic. I love it. Yeah. <clears throat> a little Very photo esque. Cool. I think I just love place. that look. Doesn't matter what you're growing on, it's gonna look nice. Mm -hmm. um, Randy says can i use a wooden stake to make my vining plant go up also does it affect the plant if the wooden stake is treated or untreated wood i actually don't know too much about the latter i think i have heard a couple things about you want to use treated wood um or there are people it's I, I it's, mean, it's depends it's your personal opinion yeah. especially in the um if it's ornamental and you're not eating it 
a lot of people don't care and get treated wood. Yeah. If it is something that you are planning on eating, then it's just a it's a personal preference thing on if. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I personally, so I have a Monstera that I use beech wood for. Ooh. And so that's kind of been nice because all the bark is gone, everything I see, there's no bugs in there and all that. Um, but I, I had it popped up on that and it was getting it to grow kind of upwards. The only thing was without the moss and such, my aerial roots weren't attaching to it or anything, which is fine. I didn't really expect that. But so that's the only thing about one steak. I, it could wrap around, like I can see a pothos getting more embedded into that. Um, I would just say it would take a little bit more time. And so I would definitely try to use some twine or something to keep it attached. Yeah. But I don't see why not. Also, Randy, I saw your comment earlier about getting a huge narrow form add-on Sonny Monstera. And good for you. <laughs> I love those. Sounds fancy. Um, I just got some fancy. different variety of add-on Sonny. I'm not sure what it is. The seller wasn't too sure. But... Maybe I'll post a picture on Root Sheets and Coffee and you can on help me. <laughs> yes. On your Monday Monster. Monday Mondays. Yeah. Can I cut my basil back uh, drastically and it'll still grow? Yes. You're looking, you can cut it as far down as the first set of leaves at the base because what it'll do is once you cut that off, it'll send out new shoots mm -hmm. from that first set of leaves. So for that one set, you'll get two. So, yes, you can. Good deal. Yeah, good time to harvest it back and then let it rock and roll again for fall. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, I've also seen a lot of people using those really cute, like, 3D printed trellises where it's, like, the the beehive shape mm. or the hearts, the all different shapes. Mm -hmm. and those are really cute. So that's a good option, too, is yeah. kind of supporting a small business going on Etsy or something um, and seeing what you can find that would work for you. Yeah. It's really good for slow-growing plants, too, like a Hoya. Because they um, don't take over it so fast. Yeah, they're yeah. slow growing, and so they kind of just slowly make their way, and it looks cute, and you don't run out of space too fast. Yeah. So for something like that, those smaller ones are really cute and nice, and you support a small business. But I will say, if you're trying to put a pothos on one of those, it's about to be crowded really, really fast. So be careful. It might look ridiculous when you get a really big trellis, but sometimes if you know you got a fast grower, yeah. it just makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise you have to replace it. And like we said, detaching it isn't always the best It's just answer. a pain, yeah. Yeah. Um, Jenny says her pumpkins are about to climb through her chain link fence, Ooh. and typically oh. vine borers take it over, but she also did the aluminum foil, and she is feeling victorious. Um, I Love Like it. I said, it's only happening to the ones I haven't foiled. So it's not even as... Uh, it has nothing to do with aluminum foil. It's probably easy just to wrap around, and it maintains its shape, um, and it doesn't suffocate the plant. I bet those are the reasons why aluminum foil was suggested mm -hmm. in the first place, where you could probably use, like, that tree tape, anything to barricade the base of the stem, which yeah. is where they initially like to lay their eggs. And then the larvae mm -hmm. climb up through your plants and eat them from the inside out. Cute. <laughs> um, how much aluminum foil are you using for that? Like just, just enough like, to just get, enough to cover this. Yeah, I'm like I probably do. I don't know, four inches, whatever the sheet of aluminum foil is that I pull off, okay. um, up the stem or up to the first set of leaves. Yeah, or something. And I do. I'll prune some off so I can get a good chunk. I of was it wondering undercover. about that too. I was like, so you have to wait till it gets a certain height. Maybe yeah, take it. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and I think it works pretty good. I mean, it must. That's the interesting thing. I feel like. Why not do it when it takes just a little bit? And now you know it kind of works for you after you right. compare it to your other um, row. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Amy asked if basil and oregano can be planted directly in the ground or if they'll take over like mint. They don't take over as much as mint. They can definitely still get very big, but I, per I put mine straight in the ground and don't normally have an issue with them. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I want to say North Star. Thanks for being here and putting in our information, moderating, all that good stuff. We appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, powdery mildew. Are you guys struggling with that this year? Hmm. It seems to me it is not as prevalent as mo years past. Do you know what powdery mildew? Like the taste I, of it? I mean, a little. I kind of get the idea. I mean, okay. I haven't had it because I don't yeah. have a dark garden. Not dark Sorry. <laughs> so yeah. it basically it looks like a white. A white powder, powder over your plants yeah. it really does that's the best way to say it yeah and the best fix that i use for it is i use milk it's weird yeah that i know it's weird 
So you do a one to two. So one part milk, two part water, and you spray it over your plants, and it helps keep it at bay. Mm. It's odd. Probably it's another so good old summer heat tale. Mm. Yeah, and it's even better mm-hmm. if you use one that's like a day or two expired. <laughs> oh yeah, I love it. Uh, yeah. I'll take it. Hey, if it doesn't knock my plants down, yeah, I don't care what it smells like out there. Very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, you think it would make it worse, but. How do you cut off an onion flower and not hurt the plant? So are your onions going to seed? Is that your point? Um, when you cut it off, it stops sending its nutrients to the flower to open, um, and it'll put the nutrients back down into the bulb. That's why a lot of onion growers will cut off their onion tops partway through the season just to focus more on bulb size. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Nice yeah, Luke does have another in-depth video on powdery mildew. If you guys did have more questions on that. Yeah, and there's definitely a lot of there's, options in treating mm-hmm. it. Um, I just go as organic as possible. It's so organic milk for the win. <laughs> yeah, but I do love that there are so many options how you treat things, yeah. how to experiment. Because it keeps it interesting for all of us. But also, you know, something might be more attainable for others, you know. So it's kind of nice to have our options. But let's see. They went to seed. Yeah, just cut them off, uh, DJD. Cut them off. And then it'll go back to your bulbs. Um, and then at that point, they'll it'll send it all back. Your tops will die down, and then you know it's time to pull. Um, I was taking notes on insecticides. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a variety as in as natural as it can be all the way to chemicals. So you just got to figure out what works for you in your garden. I saw that Homer next door said, can I cut back my basil drastically and still grow? It's two feet tall. Yeah, that's the one I said that. I know, huge. It gets ginormous. I had to do a double take because I didn't know if you mentioned the size. Like Huge. Yeah, okay. all the way back down to those first sets of leaves. Just register with me. <laughs> okay. That's um, awesome. <laughs> you want to be careful using oils on plants because mm, yeah. oil attracts the sun and you could cause burning to your plant, so you are gonna wanna dilute it most often for like neem oil, and you're also gonna wanna apply it in the evenings when the sun is not on them, Mm -hmm. and it has time to work before the sun comes. I also dilute mine a little with Dawn dish soap because it's a degreaser, so you still get the benefit of the neem oil, but it also doesn't hang on your plants super long. Yeah, which normally, like whenever I treat my plants for Pests or anything like that. I always do mix as well. Normally, I'll try just some Dawn dish soap at first, just because yeah. neem stinks and you know trying to use it. But <laughs> mixing them together is a really good way to treat a lot of different pests. Um, sometimes, if you're not sure if your plant has something going on too, it's not harmful to spray it with. So sometimes, if it looks sad and like maybe something's going on, but I don't quite see it yet, which sometimes for me is thrips because I just can't see them very well at first. I'll spray yeah. it with that just in case. Yeah. Um, but it's not harmful, so it's nice. And it's good to spray to any of your houseplants nearby that you are going to quarantine as well, that you don't know if they're sick yet, but just throw it out there because, nice. yeah. Our, what kind of trellising options are you guys using for your tomatoes? This year, we are doing three different options. Uh, technically four, because there's a row I haven't done anything to. So I have a wild row. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have a row that we're using the Florida Weave on. What is that? The floor. <laughs> there is a little gnat in here. The Florida Weave, it basically is you start at the base and you go through with twine or string or whatever oh. and wrap around and you go back and forth until your plants are secure enough. Actually, I love that. That It's sounds, very cool. Yeah. It kind of sounds fun, actually. Yeah. I, yeah. And so I'm using that. I'm using the cattle panel, just like a wall, which I did last year at my home garden, and I loved it. And then I'm using twine. Um, I actually don't know the name of it. I learned it from uh, – a lot of people do it, but I learned it from Whispering Willow Jill over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's a – strand of twine hooked up to some sort of barrier up top and you wrap your plants around it going up Mm -hmm. um it works best for your single or double stemmed plants and i just add an extra set of twine if one of my plants fork out and give me an extra stem um yeah and i'm curious to know like have you guys tried these which ones you like i'm forming my decision and 
Like I already know which one won't be in our farm next year, um, but will always be in my home garden. So it's it's definitely fun to try different things. Seeing if yeah, um, see if any of you have tried any of it. Uh, I was gonna say I just a little added thought. Yeah, sometimes before I can get to a moss pull or pull to trellis my house plants too. Something I realize I've been doing is I just find things to prop it up against so that they don't get attached to anything. So then I have time to yeah get something for it to attach to, but it still grows bigger. Like the leaves get bigger as they grow up. So my plant shelf, I'll kind of prop it up against um, the rails of that. Right. Or yeah, I've got one of those little wicker chair plant stands that I feel like everyone has mm -hmm. but um I throw the leaves like over and then they start Ooh. to grow much bigger and bushier yeah. so I have one like that and I just pull it out every so often it feels like it's getting attached but you can find little things in between or if you're not sure what size you want to get and you want to research more this and that there's little things you can do for now at least to get it to start right. growing up and right. growing that strength in the stem trellis to make you jealous I, I like love it, it. <laughs> um Randy uses his porch railings for trellises. That's an awesome way to do it. We do that actually yeah. up on the um, headquarters garden on our yep. roof here. Is I started cucumbers at one end and some other squash that was not labeled at the other end. And yeah. I'm just weaving it through our railing mm -hmm. and letting it grow wild up there. Yeah. So that's an awesome one, especially for a smaller space or uh, porch deck gardening, anything yeah. like that. Essentially, things want to grow, and a lot of them want to vine through something already. Yeah. So, kind of, if you're not finding something for it, it might find its own way, too. <laughs> so, yeah. make sure it's what you want it to be on. Exactly. <laughs> so, I've decided, uh, Callie, you're late, but that's okay. We're still here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've decided that the wall, so cattle panel walls or fence walls, you don't have to use a cattle panel. You can use just a... a um, just fencing, rolled up fencing, that's what I was trying to say. Um, you can do that and stretch it out over some T-post or mm -hmm. whatever kind of post you're utilizing. And it does, it's not a bad option if that's what you have, but it actually isn't the option I'll put in the farm next year. Yeah. I'll use that for some other things. Um, but it just, that way seems more crowded to me. Mm -hmm. And I put my rows pretty close together and it's harder in my opinion, to like go through and weave my plants through the panels. But this is something I will and did and will continue to do in my home garden. I love my tomato walls in my home garden. But at the farm and doing 250 plus plants, yeah. not it's, <laughs> it's just not working for me anymore. And it actually costs way more to do it than to do the other options. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're gonna boot it. Yeah, it doesn't really work for big gardening. And that's the thing. I feel like sometimes it's only get, certain things are only going to work on a small scale. So you have to be realistic about what you're doing too. I do like it for cucumbers though. Yeah. Um, which aren't just aren't so wild. Um, and so I'm, I may use it for that. Um, wooden stakes and twine for my tomatoes. Yeah, Lil. Mm -hmm. So we have on a couple other ones, we have stakes in the ground. Uh, like five foot they should be higher and we're gonna do some permanent structures this year now that we've figured out what we like mm -hmm. um, and much taller so stakes in the ground uh, every 10 or so feet and then we have boards across the stakes um, held up so suspended and that's what we're hooking our twine to and then down to the base of the tomato plant and wrapping them up. That's my favorite way to do it so That's far. That's really smart. That sounds very secure too. It, yeah, yeah, and it, it's happy as a clam there. And it's oh. not too tight that it's it's um, bothering the stem or suffocating in it anyway. And uh, the Florida weave is cool too. The one I talked about where you weave your twine through back and forth until your plants are secure. I wouldn't do it with tomatoes mm -hmm. again. Um, but I do like it for peppers, eggplants, and tomatillos. Okay. So like all yeah. these things have a place in my farm, but they don't all, all known for tomatoes. I don't like them all for tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. interesting. But that's the thing. Trial and error and seeing what works for you and what you like. Um, let's see. Oh, I was going to say, um, there's a couple different methods to getting something to attach to. Like we're talking about twine is a good thing to use. The tomato truss supports kind of thing yeah. is helpful. The C-clips. C -clips. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, 
I use twine, but also a lot of my things, just the C-clips are too big, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and I'll use, yeah. like, the clips, either the ones that you pinch yeah. or the C-clips, just I enough should... to get them. Yeah, but on the ZZ. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> just enough to get them started, like my binding things. Mm -hmm. And typically, I'll go through and remove them when I'm in yeah. pruning sometime, um, or they get lost on the farm. And uh, mm -hmm. so it's just a help to get them off the ground and onto the panel or fence or whatever I'm using because I don't ever start my fencing on the ground. Your plants are strong enough to get a foot two above. So I start my nice and high and that gives me that additional foot or two at the top and um, gives me more growing space later on in the season. So um, North Star says that they use the green Velcro strapping to support the plants, which they are kind of cool because um, like how I was saying with twine, you can pick any size, you can tie as tight as you want kind of thing. The nice thing about the Velcro is same thing, like it's a little bit of a bigger size, so you can kind of adjust however big you need, but it's reusable, and yeah. when you pull it off, it's really gentle. I will say the twine is gentle too, but I, right. and you can reuse it as well, but those strips are really nice, they're a little bit more secure than twine, because twine does a little bit want to slip. Um, that was my only issue with it, but there's always a way, so. But, yes, thanks for adding that in. I knew I was forgetting something. I do like that one. Um, also, I saw Emma Kogar, I'm guessing, said that, um, thanks for the discussion. I've done a championship job of avoiding all trellising until today. <laughs> so, I love it. So, people are going to start doing some different trellising methods Again, tag us on Instagram because I want to see or email yeah. us at gardenhelp at migardener.com. Yeah, um, and I'm working on putting the video. I started the video earlier in the season when I was just starting these options, just, you know, describing what I was doing. And um, I'm kind of, I just did videos on it, what, last week, I think, giving my, like, mid-season opinion on it. And uh, I'll do it near the end of the season again once everything is, like, fruit-bearing and way mm. loaded down. And decide from down. there. <laughs> um, She's having a big harvest this year. Loaded down. Yeah. I'm having a big harvest. My tomato plants are packed. I swear there's more tomato Love than it. plant. It is packed. Love it. Yeah. Post it. We need to see a picture. I know. I know. I'll post <laughs> Tomato <laughs> Alley. That's how I call it. Tomato I Alley. It. Yeah, it's good. So cute. Um, Love out of all the things to plant in August, how much shade do green onions need? Um, onions do fine in the sun. They can do partial shade too. I probably wouldn't put them in strict shade. I don't think you'll get too much out of them. Um, see. Fox Farm Soil is great. Yeah, that's a good option. Mm -hmm. Can you recommend a book to identify seedlings? Um, you mm. know what? I don't actually have one offhand, yeah. unfortunately. But I have been thinking about that it's a huge tool to know like what your seedlings are coming up to look mm -hmm. like. Uh, you can always use your sources. You're either if you're in our Facebook groups, you can tag us on Instagram mm -hmm. and show them to us and either one of us will hit it or one of our awesome community members will yeah. know and give you the answers mm -hmm. to them. Uh, if, you t if you tag us in your plant identifying post in your stories ideally, then we'll share it in our yeah. stories and kind of get people to look and see. I think it's fun because then we get to... I could do like a game with that yeah, too. Yeah, I don't know. Put all the seedlings up and have people guess what they are. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. I love plant identifying. Um, um, I do use ProMix. You hear a lot about it. Yeah, that's actually what, mainly what I used this year. Uh, I personally appreciate um, the large bales. It comes mm. in a huge pack. Um, I was going to say, Katie Williamson... It says, I need to repot my snake plant. What kind of soil do you recommend? So with repotting a snake plant, they don't need to be watered very often. It's kind of a once a month deal, sort of. So right. I would say cactus soil, like something really well draining. So if you're going to get a pre-mixed bag, um, I like the brand Espoma um, and Schultz so far. But they're a pre-mixed bag, but it's cactus soil, so it's really well draining. Um, or you can mix your own. And so with that, I would do... You know, you can use the vermiculite, but I would really focus on also putting in, like, extra perlite than you normally would. Uh, maybe orchid bark, that kind of thing. But Something you want to, give you want more to be space. fast draining. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, they said there's an app called Picture This. Works well for plant identification, and they have a free version. Very cool. I don't know what the compost, compost, compost mm -hmm. was for, but yes. 
Whatever it was for, I agree. Compost, compost is the answer to everything. <laughs> is the answer to um, everything. Anything I don't... Yeah, okay. Oh. oh. Jenny, I was halfway through reading that. I don't know where it went. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think we're probably close to wrapping it up here today. Unless yeah. we have more trellising questions. We'll try to catch another or two. Well, yeah. yes. Compost is hard to find for indoors. Oh, yeah. I... You have to be careful with using compost indoors because it can invite pests in. Yeah. I personally don't do it. It just seems like a lot of effort for some risk and all that. So... I don't know. Um, change your soil out every so probably about once a year. You should be repotting in the spring, more than likely. And at that time, I give it fresh soil that helps. Yeah, uh, you can give it uh, plant food in the water, that kind of thing. But I don't really do anything to do compost indoors. Yeah, absolutely. You can send, and it's encouraged. Send your garden photos to us. Yes. Um, if you are on Instagram, that's the best option over at Roots, Shoots, and Coffee, all, spe- all spelled out. Um, and then uh, you can send them there or tag us in your stories. Or you could, if you don't have Instagram, send it over in an email to gardenhelp at migardener.com and I am the one who answers them. And I can then, well, we can talk about it. And if you want, I can also share it in our community for everyone else to see and enjoy. So, um, And... Yeah, please use our hashtags to root shoots and rainbows as for our color coded garden. We haven't seen many of them. She some needs to. Yeah. Yes. So I know some of you guys have got your flowers up and different things. I know there's some color going on in your garden. Yeah, and tag us in your seeds that you're growing. We like to see them up and running too. So, yeah. all right. I think we're going to sign off for today yeah. and we'll see you next Tuesday. We appreciate you guys hanging with us. Um, and then, so let's talk fall gardening. Yeah. Next yeah. season, or next season. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh. For this next season, um, next week. Mm-hmm. And uh, there is a lot to talk about. So get your yeah. journals out and come with some ideas of what you're starting. And um, yeah, we'll be here. Sounds so, good. Yeah. We'll see you guys next